Okay, 9.1 is circles and parabolas. We're going to do just circles today. We'll talk about parabolas tomorrow, and then we'll talk about ellipses on Wednesday. Uh, this is probably going to be a review for s most of us, should be. <clears throat> if it's not, that's okay. I'm not expecting you to know anything right now. I'm going to reteach it. But you probably saw this in Algebra 2, well, um, maybe towards the end. But a circle, guys. Everybody in here knows what a circle is. It's just a set of points. Round, right? Everybody see uh, the center. Everybody understand what the center of the circle is. The center is right here in the middle. This is a point just on the circle. They're talking about what is the distance from the center to a point on the outside of the circle? That's the radius, okay? So what's it called when it goes from one side of the circle to the other through the center? That's the diameter, okay? What's the relationship between the diameter and the radius? Radius is half. Okay, good. Good, good, good. You will be expected to know the standard form of the equation of a circle. Okay, it's right there. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. Your H and your K are the center. So when you're given information and it says write the circle, equation of the circle in standard form. Okay, your standard form of a line would be y equals mx plus b. This is the same thing, it's just for a circle. Your x and your y stay as variables. That's gonna be in your answer. Like when you have y equals mx plus b, it tells you the equation of the line. I have two x plus six, right, y equals. Your x and your y in the equation are variables. The same thing's gonna happen here when you write your circle. Your x and your y are gonna stay as variables. Your h and your k are your center. So whatever your center is, the H goes with the X, the K goes with the Y. What do you notice, guys, about the area, I mean, not the area, about the equation, the sign in the middle? It's a what? It's a subtraction. So if you're taking a positive number and putting it in for H or K, in the formula, it's negative. So if you have a negative number and you plug it into the formula, what happens to that sign? It becomes positive. Okay, good. <clears throat> good, good, good. Um... I think that's all we really need to talk about right this second. All right, let's go through these examples. All right, finding the standard equation of a circle. All right, here is the circle. They give you a picture. A lot of times they're not going to give you a picture. So if they don't give you a picture, what should you do? Draw one. Because you have to understand the information that they're giving you. Sometimes you'll be given the center and a point on the circle. Sometimes they'll give you two points on the circle. So you have to find a little bit more information. And we'll talk about that in a second. But it says the point 1, 4 is on a circle whose center is at negative 2, negative 3. Shown in the equation, or shown in the picture. Write the standard form of the equation. So let's write down what we have. We know that our HK, which is our center, right? Our HK is negative 2, negative 3. You guys understand that. Negative 2, negative 3. Correct? Everybody got that? What is the equation of a circle? How do we write it? It's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So the things that we have to have in order to write our equation of our circle, we have to have the center and we have to have the radius. What do we have already? We have the center. What do we need? The radius. Okay, so you can do this a couple different ways. We can start off and write our equation like this. X, if I have minus a negative 2, what does that become? So X plus 2 squared plus Y, I have minus a negative 3 becomes, so plus 3 equals. I don't have that R. How do I find it? How do I find R? With the point. Okay, what do we do with these, with these two points? How do you find out how far it is from one point to another? The distance formula, okay? So if you, they don't give you a picture, guys, I suggest you draw one because sometimes, like I just said, they'll give you two points on the circle and you find from one to the other. Is that the radius when you find from one to the other going through the center? It's the diameter. So what would you have to do with that value? Cut it in half. So right now I know the radius in the center, so I'm gonna use the distance formula. So real quick over here, <clears throat> it's the difference in our X's and the difference in our y's. So I'm going to say negative 2 minus 1 squared plus 
negative 3 minus 4 squared, correct? Everybody with me? Yes? Okay. So negative 2 minus 1, that's going to give me a negative 3 squared plus, what's negative 3 minus 4? Negative 7 squared. All right, so keep going. What's negative 3 squared? 9. Plus, what's negative 7 squared? 49. And then what's 9 plus 49? Square root of 58. Okay, so my radius is the square root of 58. So when I plug that into this formula here, do you guys agree that I have the square root of 58 squared, correct? Is that simplified? Is that simplified? What happens when you square a square root? It disappears, right? So this equation of your circle is x plus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 58. So in order to write the equation of the circle in standard form, you need to have two things. You have to have the center, which is your h and your k, and you have to have your radius. <clears throat> Now, they'll give you the question in different ways. Sometimes they'll say two points on a circle. If it's two points on the circle, you have to find the middle. How would you find the middle? If you have two points, just think about this. If I have two points here, I have a point here, and I have a point here. How do you find the middle? How do you find the middle of two points? The midpoint. Very good. You're going to have to find the midpoint. Do you guys remember how to find the midpoint? Well, how do you find the middle of something? You're going to add the two x's, divide by two. Add the two y's, divide by two. If there's not a, a question like that in here, I'll do one in a second. <clears throat> so if you were given the equation of the circle like this, x plus 5 squared plus y minus 7 squared equals 12. And I said to you guys, what's the center? The center, as Fairfoot just told us, is negative 5, positive 7. Why did she change the signs when she took them out? Yeah, because there's a negative in the original equation. So that 5, that says plus 5, it's really negative 5 because when you plug in negative, minus a negative gives you a positive. So when you are given the equation, like here, and you're asked to identify the center, you change the signs when you pull it out. What would my radius be? The square root of 12. Do I leave it like that? No. What does 12 break down into? 2 square, two square root of 3. Good. Very good. So remember, your equation is radius squared. If you have a question and it says something like this, well, they won't write it backwards. They might, but... What's the center here? Why is it zero? Because there's nothing there. Good. There's nothing being added or subtracted. So it's zero comma positive one. Good. And what's your radius? Which is one. Good. How come it's not plus or minus? Why isn't it plus or minus one? Because you took the square root. How come it's not plus or minus? Because it's just right. Do you measure distance in negative numbers? So you're only going to need the positive one. You're right. Okay. Question? How many of you have seen this before? Okay, good. Good, good. All right. Two more. <clears throat> two more, two more, two more. Actually, I lied. I'll give you an, an extra one. All right. Write the equation of the circle in standard form. This is not in standard form. Everybody see that? See how you have your X's and Y's and all this stuff together? When you have your equation set up like this, you're go you, we will be able to manipulate this equation into our standard form equation by completing the square. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is you're going to get your x's together and your y's together, and you want to move constants to the other side. So I'm going to collect my x's. I'm going to collect my y's. I'm going to move the constant to the other side. So I have x squared minus 6x plus, and I'm going to complete the square. So I have my x's. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here with the y's. 
collect your y's, y squared minus 2y plus. We're going to complete the square there. And then when I move positive 6 over, what does it become? Negative 6. Good. So you get, first thing you're going to do is collect all of your x's together, collect all of your y's together, and then move your constant to the other side. Does anybody remember how to complete the square? No? Anybody? 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 That's okay. Yes, very good. You take this term right here. This is your B. And you're going to use that information to do everything you need to. So I'm going to say B over 2. So negative 6 over 2. What does that equal? What, what does it equal? Negative 3. Good. So this piece of information is super important. My first parenthesis is going to be a binomial. It's going to be x, and then what is this number right here? What is, what, what is it? It's a minus, so x minus 3 squared. And then when you square negative 3, what do you get? 9. And what you do to one side, you do where? So if I added 9 on the left-hand side, I have to add 9 to the right-hand side. <clears throat> Every single time, same thing. You take that b term, just like Sarah just told us, you take this b term, so I have negative 2 divided by 2. You always divide it by 2. We're completing the square. What does that give me? What's negative 2 divided by 2? Negative 1. So that's all the information I need. So I know my second parenthesis is a binomial. It's going to be y and then whatever that number is. What is it? So minus 1 squared. And then when we square negative 1, what do you get? Positive 1. So if I add 1 here, then I'm going to add 1 here. So simplify on the right. What's negative 6 plus 9 plus 1? Negative 6 plus 9 is? 3 plus 1 is? 4. There is your equation in standard form of your circle. We collect our x's, we collect our y's, and then we complete the square. All right, so now that we've done this, we're going to practice this a little more, I promise. But what is the center of the circle? Negative 6 and 9 is 3 plus 1. What it, what's my center? 3, 1. Good. And what's my radius? Which is? Perfect. Good. Good, good, good. All right. Before we do the next one, <clears throat> let me just make up a problem over here. Say you guys are given a circle. And again, I'm making this up all by myself, so I don't know how the numbers are going to work out. But in order to write the equation of a circle, right, and this could be in a word problem form to where you guys, why I say it's important to write or to draw a picture. In order to write the standard form of your circle, you need what two things again? The center, the center and the radius. So say that they gave you two points on the circle. Say they told you that there was a point negative 2, 6, and there was a point, uh, I don't know, 1, 4. The, both those points are on the circle. Okay, that's the information they gave you. What do you have to find? You have to find the what? Midpoint. The midpoint. You have to find the center. So when they give you two points that are on the circle, you can't just put one of those points in and say it's the center. You have to find it. So in order to do that, you would say negative 2 plus 1, Okay, hold on, bad example. <laughs> Let's make this 2. Yeah. So negative 2 plus 2 divided by 2. And then what are your y's? 6 plus 4 divided by 2. What's negative 2 plus 2? 0. And 0 divided by 2 is? Okay, so your center is at 0, comma. What's 6 plus 4 divided by 2 is? 5. See how we had to do that one extra step since they didn't give us a center? We had to find it. So you're just finding the middle. So now that I have that, I know that my equation is going to be x squared plus y minus 5 squared equals, and now I have to find the radius. How would you do that? If you have the center and you have a point on the circle, how would you find the radius? <clears throat> the distance. You could do the distance from here to here. Or you could do the distance from here to here. It doesn't matter. I would do wherever the numbers were smaller. All right, so if we're going to find the distance here, 
you have zero minus two squared plus five minus four squared. So I have negative two squared plus one squared. What's negative two squared? Four plus one is so your radius would be the square root of five. So what would be my radius squared? What would I put right here? Just the whole number five. So if you're given a point on the circle and the center, all you have to do is use the distance formula to find the length of the radius. If they give you two points on the circle, you have to do one extra thing and find the middle using the midpoint. And then you can find the distance from the middle to either point that they give you. Does that make sense? You guys all right? It's Monday morning, I know. All right, last one, and then I'm going to let you guys go for today. <clears throat> How do you find intercepts? How do we find intercepts for anything? Plug in what? Plug in zero, all right? That's all that this is to find intercepts. So if I'm going to find intercepts, you plug in zero. So over here, I'm going to plug in zero for x. If I plug in zero for x, what am I finding? The y-intercept, okay, so 0 minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 16. I'm finding intercepts, so whatever intercept you find, you plug in 0 for the other one. So let's just simplify basic algebra. 0 minus 4, this gives me negative 4 squared, right, plus y minus 2 squared equals 16. What's negative 4 squared? 16 plus y minus 2 squared equals 16. Now what? I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. Good. So I have y minus 2 squared equals, what's 16 minus 16? Zero. Zero. Good. Now what do I do? Okay, so what do we do now? Square it. Not square it. We're trying to undo. You could, you could square it, but it just makes things yuckier. How do you undo? We're trying to get y all by itself. So take the square root, right? Agreed? Okay, so I have y minus 2. What goes in front of my square root since I put the square root on? Okay. I understand there's no plus or minus 0. Just saying, get in the habit of that. So now what's the last thing we have to do? Add 2. So plus 2. So I get y equals 2. So when I plug in 0 for x, I get out 2 for y. That means when you draw your circle, where does it hit the y-axis? At 0, 2. How many times does it hit it? Just once. All right. So now when we come over here, we do the exact same thing, but I'm going to plug in 0 for y. So I'm going to say x minus 4 squared plus... Zero. Yep. 0 minus 2 squared equals 16. Yes? Okay, so let's go through the motions again. X minus 4 squared plus, <clears throat> what's 0 minus 2? So I have negative 2 squared equals 16. X minus 4, looks like a Y. Plus 4, yes, mm -hmm. equals 16. Now what? Subtract 4. Subtract 4, good. So you have X minus 4 squared equals 12. What do I do now? I'm going to take the square root. When you take the square root, guys, what goes in front of your answer? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. So this is why I told you guys to do that with the plus minus zero. A lot of times, since we're using, we're starting off with x squared, you'll have two answers for your intercepts. So when we go through this, <clears throat> what do I do now? How are you? What do I do now? How do I get x all by itself? I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So, guys, when I do this, I have x equals, it's 4 plus the square root of 12, and it's 4 minus the square root of 12. Do you all see that? Can we simplify the square root of 12? Yes, this is the same as 4 plus 2 root 3 and 4 minus 2 root 3. Can I combine those two things together? No. no. So your intercepts would be 4, 2 root 3, comma 0, and 4 minus 2 root 3, comma 0. We always write intercepts as ordered pairs. Always. Always, 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 always. 
So 95% of the time when you do this, you're going to get two answers because you're starting off with a squared. Just that first one ended up where it was zero. That's why it wasn't plus or minus anything. Am I going to ask you to graph something like this? Absolutely not. <clears throat> Absolutely not. But algebraically, we should be able to work that out. Questions? No questions. Yeah. Do you have to simplify or can you move the S squared to 12? Oh, simplify. Yeah. Always break it down if you can. Ooh. All right. We good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's...